Holy fuck, man. It has been too long. It's, yeah, wow. I can't a remember. Very long time. Year or two? <laughs> Longer Maybe than more, that, I knows. think. Longer than that. The last time I think I actually saw you was at the Heavy Music Awards a few years back, and Architects had picked up an award, and I was just there doing a couple of bits of interview, and I saw you there, and you know what the award ceremonies are like. And I was like, "Oh, Josh, ah, oh, dude, let's catch up." And then you're like, "Oh, fuck, I gotta go and do a thing," and then it's like, "Oh, I'll catch you later." <laughs> and it was just yeah. very, very Sounds quick on right. the night, but um. And then, God, yeah, before that, I'm probably a festival or something. So I almost yeah, I don't can't. know where to start in terms of catching up and asking you how you are because it's been such a while. But, yeah, how are you, man? How's things? Yeah, good, man. Yeah, all good. I was worried that I was going to miss uh, this. It was a bit of a gamble because, like, my wife teaches yoga on a Monday night and yeah. I have to put our daughter to bed. Got my baby monitor here. Yeah. Yep. And uh, she's normally asleep by seven, but she can stay awake till late so i was like oh, right I hope she yeah, goes yeah, down. Yeah, okay yeah. <laughs> but yeah no I'm, I'm good how are you yeah i'm all good man i'm all good yeah it's uh it's it's been a weird time both good and bad and obviously the whole covid thing and lockdowns and things like that and yeah i think actually i'm like me personally i'm kind of at a stage now where maybe i'm getting desensitized to it i'm seem to be able to take a few more positives here and here and there out of it than maybe i was two or three months ago but are are you kind of how how has it been for for you over the past six months because i know you're a massive guitar nerd anyway so did life change too much for you uh Uh, yeah well it's more that like my when lockdown started my wife was still on maternity leave and we've got our daughter just like (laughs) she turned one in april and uh that's yeah just adjusting to like having her at home full time like she needs like constant attention so Mm, i mm. was working a lot less than i would normally which was an adjust adjustment for me because i like to just keep busy and like yeah write riffs all day and Mm -hmm, and stuff mm -hmm. like that uh but obviously i can't complain it's it's been really great as well but it was definitely an adjustment to like uh just like full dad mode yeah pretty much like full time so whereas i was lucky enough that like previously my wife would go out and meet up with other mums go to her mums just go out and stuff and take her out and about but when we were like you know proper lockdown she was like you can't just be in there all day on your own i need to like i need some help yeah, so I was like, yeah a, oh yeah this is a all team right. effort yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i can imagine but yeah so, no it's, it's been really great as well though so yeah I can't well i imagine but... you know connecting <laughs> with your daughter in such a, an amazing way every day so how how has it been yeah. really because obviously a lot of dads a lot of new parents they don't get to have that that time because the maternity yeah. or paternity leave will end and then yeah it's back to work back to the office so i guess in in years to come you might look at it in as a blessing in disguise going oh, wow, no, what, yeah. what a way for me to connect with my daughter oh 100 percent. yeah i i feel like uh especially uh you know typically men you know uh, back to work quite quickly mm. uh and luckily yeah i wasn't like on tour and i haven't been on tour for ages like in in that sense which has been kind of cool to like be around for it it's just going to make it that much harder though when i do go back on tour yes because like yeah. she they literally just went away for like two days and i was mm. like oh my god i miss them so much and now it's like you know when we tour it's like a month at a time so i'm like oh man mm. it's gonna be mm. yeah interesting yeah. but yeah no it's, it's it's been really great so all all good all positive um but i'm normally like super productive and like if i didn't have a kid like i have friends that were like furloughed and like i'm so bored i'm just like oh. mm. if i had this time like locked away i i have like five albums written now and that sort of thing. So, uh, <laughs> but um no i, I can't complain at all that's Nothing great, man. That's about. that's that's good to hear. And yeah, obviously, yeah. kind of jokingly saying, you know, five albums written and stuff like that. And of course, you've been in full dad mode, but still writing and stuff. So has yeah, has it been creative for you? Yeah, yeah. Like whenever, and especially like the last, um, you know, when the you know restrictions like loosened off somewhat, when it mm. wasn't quite as strict. Like the first, I don't know how long it was, like three, four months. Yeah, March. But, time, um, isn't it? Yeah, when my wife started working again she works from home but we could give our daughter to my mother-in-law and my parents actually who live nearby mm-hmm. uh and like i was like oh cool i've got like a few days where i'm working now and i'm getting a lot more done now so uh yeah it's cool nice nice and um yeah it's kind of it, it must be interested sort of balancing out that your 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 family life with your sort of your your new work life now because as you said previously be like right we'll, you know you'll be in writing mode with the band and then it'll be tour 
uh, yeah. and then so the whole dynamic must feel totally different um yeah I, yeah in a way i mean i feel like normally i think this goes for dan as well in architects like writing is just a, a constant there's, there's never like a period where it's like right now we need to like write an album mm. um it it's it's a bit of half and half so like and w with solosis as well it's not you know both bands just writing in general both bands music requires a lot of attention to detail and it's not the sort of thing that you can just like write easily or quickly sorry mm, mm. um in some in some instances you can write a song in a day but like those are like usually fluke uh lucky sort of things yeah. that just come out of the air but um so like there's never a period where it's like right you've got a few months to write now and it's like it's just a constant thing constant so um, writing then so i one thing i wonder now obviously yeah being both silosis and architects do you kind of carp, uh, sort of carpentinalize your 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 mind when you're writing thinking right i'm going to write now and it's going to be silosis i'm going to write now be it for architects or do you kind of just write a riff and then figure it out afterwards um well I see what you're saying, but because both bands sort of, well, to a degree, play in like quite different tunings, like Architects have a very like low tuned and weird, uh, unconventional tuning. So like, it's rare that I would be playing on a guitar in the Architects tuning that would, I would then write a riff that I'd use for Silosis or vice versa, because mm. uh, Silosis, on the other hand, doesn't down tune very much. So uh so yeah in that sense uh not really uh sometimes with choruses like the type of chorus if i come up with something like oh this would be a good chorus uh then yeah it can depend on what the vibe is uh but yeah no i i yeah i think I, a lot of the time i'll just i'll know what band i'm writing for yeah as you yeah, as beforehand. you're kind of going yeah. like immediately be like oh that's definitely a yeah i mean it, it depends yeah. like honestly it's as easy as like picking up a guitar it's like that guitar i use predominantly for architects yeah that one I, or these two i use for silosis so it's like whatever guitar i pick up i or just like i'm playing on but um yeah i'm i'm done like a great deal of writing recently i've done a bit more like home diy actually oh mate same <laughs> same like time. yeah uh, i mean uh, the weekend just gone was all of the jobs weeding yeah. and uh yeah, yeah kind of you know i, I realized I was, I was up cutting the lawn at 10 o'clock in the morning because the weather was <clears throat> not quite shit here in manchester and i was like right i'll get a cut in before winter and i was yeah, excited yeah, yeah. about this and then i kind of took that moment i was like wow this is uh Hello, thirty-one. <laughs> yeah, don't know about you, but heat waves back today oh, like in Manchester. Pretty, but today yeah, was it's been crazy pretty warm. Because so, here. yeah, well, uh, you're further south, right, in the UK. I'm in Reading. Reading, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But yeah, no, I mean, I'm, Manchester it rains a lot, um, but it, it, even here today, it's been it's been pretty. And also, as well, it just kind of came out of nowhere. I kid you <laughs> not, I had a bit of the heating on the other day. Um, oh yeah, and, uh, yeah. yeah was... <laughs> and then now it's like straight back to this. Like, <laughs> yeah that's not what to do so you mentioned that in terms of writing you haven't done a great deal yet and i guess you know the you, the latest cellulosis album was out last year um so it's still relatively fresh in actually in, it was at the start of this year yeah was it, it was the start um, of this year i actually February. thought it was the tail end of of 19 that's when we yeah first released the first single ah, I think. Right. but so i mean yeah you know wires. start of the year same same yeah know, so, about the start of the year. so obviously yeah it's still still a very fresh album so it must feel yeah it must be a bit weird and a bit gutting that um uh, you've got an album that's that fresh finally that did a comeback you, that you yeah. can't yeah like five <laughs> years out <laughs> and then yeah yeah, yeah. Like, and then I you mean, come back we, and we... you can't do what you would usually do with an album yeah i mean it, it, it's, it is what it is we um yeah architects had sort of just wrapped up um the holy hell touring anyway uh so silos has had a few uh festivals booked mm. we were, we were just being like quite particular and about what we we're doing not like over overdoing it um so but yeah i'm really looking forward to um doing some festivals again uh, i enjoy like singing in a band and yeah it'd been like five years since silos had done an album and like toured or anything so i was like oh cool this would be a nice time to do that and then it was like we at least we got to do the the London show. That was cool. Like we did. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, I I had yeah. moved up here at that point. I wasn't able sure. to get back down. I was good because you had Discarnate as support. Like, oh yeah, fuck, man. Like, I mean, I love that band and good friends with Al Llewellyn. And uh, it, it was talking earlier about the strength of metal in 2020. Yeah. And to me, 
don't know if you agree, but metal seems to be perhaps in the best place I've ever known it. I don't know. Yeah, I sometimes I um, I wonder. Like it, it's um, there are, there are some like really great bands. Obviously, um, Discarnate being one. Um, obviously, Power Trip were doing really well. I know, um, and so you know, they were doing right, so right. much. Yeah, like really great tours and everything, and like they've been a band for a long time but it seemed like they were like kind of breaking through yeah breaking yeah, through is like still still felt like a sort of a newcomerish band i don't know i mean i guess they're only i think that happens maybe it's just in two metal albums though in. there's very few instances with metal bands where <clears> they <throat> drop the first ep or album and it goes boom i think it takes a while in metal to almost yeah, even get to like the days, breakthrough yeah. stage you know the breakthrough stage for metal is about album four these days <laughs> yeah, oh yeah it's that yeah so um yeah no I, it's some I feel like there's a, a gap in in terms. Like, I think metal generally is doing well, but I feel like there's like um, more of a discrepant, like more of a gap between like. Um, I think it's cool. There's a lot of like really new uh, sounding bands coming out mm. and very different sounding, and you've got like, for instance, like Conjurer are doing well, like yeah. kind of plays bass and so on. Uh, and loads yeah like both like really like unique bands which is cool have you heard um, um orbit yeah. culture yet i don't think i have i've oh, heard they're the name from sweden they just dropped in uh, a new album uh, if you get a chance or i think just i think they'll be way up your street but they're phenomenal right. yeah they're really but good. yeah like it, it's it's great but at the same time like i still feel like there's not much like I don't want to say like traditional as in like cheesy metal or anything or like or <laughs> even specifically row. thrash but there's like a <laughs> there's not much in the you know uh, i don't know what i'm trying to say like without it sound like I'm I, I guess i guess whining, probably but... like what more of the old sort of a uh, bit more old school inf- influences here and there a bit more the sort of thrashier risk because i think that's why a lot of people connected with silosis so much over the years is that you seem to bridge that gap between thrash and some of the old school stuff and more more of the modern stuff yeah yeah i, I to be honest i I don't know if you were like afraid to say it, but I'm not. <laughs> but like metalcore, like we, it was metalcore was something like when we first started uh, releasing music that we really wanted to like distance ourselves from. Mm. Just, just because it was, and when I say metalcore, I don't just mean like, I mean, Architects is considered metalcore, but to mm. me in 2007, metalcore was just like really bad. Do, 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 like at the gates riffs with like really generic breakdowns not just and very it, generic choruses too yeah yeah exactly mm-hmm. like it was it was everyone trying to be like kill switch or as lay dying sort of thing mm-hmm. and i didn't want us to like get lumped in with that obviously there are you know converges metalcore but at, at that time like metalcore to me was like just the association was that sort of stuff and i was just like right we need to tune up to e we're not going to play breakdowns anymore mm-hmm. we're not going to down tune and it uh it kind of it separated us and it like gave us our own lane and we were kind of one of the few bands sort of i guess doing a more like traditional metal mm-hmm. at the time mm-hmm. um but also not we also weren't like um like in, really in with the whole like thrash revival bands that was happening around then you know when you, you were had, right like, in between the two there's no yeah which which it. i was happy yeah. with but um now like th- at the time i was just really like don't call us metalcore like we're we're doing our own thing sort of thing and now i'm just like oh, do you know what i i grew up loving yeah i love like all this thrash and stuff but i also grew up obsessed with like poison the well and hate mm-hmm. breed and stuff like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and kill switch so for, metalcore i don't care <laughs> like it's interesting with with, with metalcore actually because one, one thing that amazes me is it's longevity and popularity i mean you got bands that are kicking that are really breaking through now like fit for a king and stuff and the the base of the sound of metalcore has changed a little bit here and there, but you could put it against some Killswitch albums. They're not vastly different, and yet we're sort of 20 years on from Metalcore nearly, and it's amazing yeah. how popular it still is. I never thought that would happen with Metalcore. And I, I feel like, because what I had a bit of as well when I was younger is um, I the first sort of metal that I really like got into and like honed in on was like, oh, this is exciting, was like death metal and thrashy stuff. Yeah. Uh, and especially at that time when Silas has like just started out in like the early 2000s, that whole, you know, if you liked at the gates and stuff, you'd have like a very elitist view of any other types of metal. Mm. And because I was like, all right, well, we're not doing like, you know, we're going to like not be associated with metalcore and stuff. It was a very sort of like, there's, there's like a lot of elitism around metalcore at the time, I think. Uh, and I mm. think 
your average metal fan now is just like, oh, I can't be asked to keep up with this. Like, yeah, I actually enjoy this. There's, yeah, there's, that, there's like, been so 20 much years metal ago, core now. I can't dislike it all. <laughs> no, I know. Like 20 years ago, you'd get like the really like traditional elitist metal guys and they'd be like, yeah. No, I don't like this. Yeah, yeah, but now they're yeah. just like, oh, you know what? Yeah, it's fine. I, I do like it. I don't care. Yeah, um, yeah. I think bands like so. Parkway have, have, have helped with that too in the show that they Yeah, especially like in Germany. Like, you know, they, they do so well now and they um they really... Yeah, it's interesting. Like, I never expected them like to go in the direction they've gone in, but like it, you know, really it just um, become like metalcore like... Ramstein. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're like really appeals to those like you know German European festival goers, which is cool. Yeah, 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 it's amazing. So, what was it like then? So, you know, p- picking Silosis back up after five years, did it did did it feel natural? Were you nervous about it, or was it just kind of like, um, oh, this would be fun again? Yeah, no, it was just like it'd be fun. Um, I feel like fans have been i think like the the main thing was like fans have really been uh so patient with and not really had any uh any anything from me or the band saying like what was going on or what happened mm. and like what did happen i mean i, I yeah when, even when it happened so i basically i put so this is on haters months before anything i started playing with architects or anything like that this this was the start of 2016 we did a tour and i was just like mm. oh i don't know if i want to do this like there's something is that the burn, um, just burnout yeah uh, yeah or no no i think part of it was like the self-imposed restrictions mm. like i think i had uh i kind of view it as like uh you know like maybe someone that's brought up like really religious or repressed in any way uh, and now, after a while, they're just like, oh, I'm just going to rebel. So oh, I, like, I had like self-imposed, like, you can't down tune. We're not going to play <laughs> breakdowns. We're not going to do any of this stuff. This is like, Solus just has to fit in this lane yeah. and like all that kind of thing. And I was just like, oh, you know what? I just, just want to have fun. I like, I'm just like stood in one spot. Going, on, like, I, I still like playing technical stuff and that'll always be part of Solus to sound. But um, yeah, I was just like, oh, I put up all these limitations and I don't know if I'm in, enjoying this. Mm. Uh so basically, yeah, but I didn't know at the time. I was like, well, do we announce that we've split up or what? Maybe I just need like some time to figure things out and see how I feel about it. And uh, then obviously I started playing with Architects and, and joined the band. And uh, I was still kind of like unsure. And I didn't know if I'd, like, I'd, I'd try and like, I'd be on tour with the guys and they'd be like, you know, all these comments you're getting about silosis and what's going on. Like, why don't you just like address it? And I'm like, oh, I'd start writing something out and be like, mm. Oh no, I can't. Yeah, constantly too long. And deleting the and tweet. Yeah, been there. Many yeah, times. so I, I yeah. just left it, which is really bad. But yeah, fans were so patient. And after a while, I was just like, oh, Architect's going to have some time off. I've got an album done anyway. Let's get out. So yeah, it, it was it was going to be exciting. I was, I was looking forward to yeah just doing a few more shows. I really enjoyed doing vocals and stuff. So that was going to be fun. And I was, yeah, I was a bit nervous about, you know, I was, I was more nervous about, um, yeah, my voice actually, just because right, I hadn't yeah. like toured or I well, obviously toured, but I hadn't like yeah, cause toured do you and do backing sang every in, night in Architects Live. Yeah, I do like yeah. a few lines in the set, but it's like nothing to the extent. Com- com- yeah, lessons, compared yeah. to a full set, even like a half an hour support sort of set, like it's still like not the same as that. So I was just like, oh, I've got the stamina. So I was, mm. and uh, but yeah, no, I was I was really happy. Uh, I'm, I actually like anyone who knows me knows that I really like um get uh what's what's the word self um i put myself down a lot but i was actually really happy with my vocals at the show. Oh, that's great i was that's like great. that was the best i've ever sounded and i still feel like that so uh oh, it went well yeah absolutely <laughs> and i've got to say dude the way in which you did step into arch- architects because it's all part of the story uh, it's, it's it's just been phenomenal the way in which you did that and carried yourself and the band and and the memory to tom it's just been amazing to see do you, do you feel quite settled now within architects yeah 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 for sure no thanks for saying that it's um yeah it, it's it's been uh it's crazy how long it's been actually like yeah like four no four years to, yeah i can't remember what year and yeah it's coming up to like four years now that like i, I started touring with them so uh mm. yeah no like, those guys have been yeah like really close friends of mine for years now like i even when they record well before solos even released an ep in like 2005 or six we used to play shows together all the time and then mm-hmm. they he stayed at played my shows house. Of like, i remember in that whole scene in that sort of time oh, yeah like, exit 10 sixth 
Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. all them sort of bands. I remember that time, man. Yeah, Malefice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Architects and yeah. who else was? Uh, Clone the Fragile, Bring the oh, Horizon, God, like all yes, touring back in the day. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, so we've, we've known each other for a long, long, long time. So it felt really uh, like, yeah, familiar. Well, I'm not, not familiar, but yeah, I'd, I'd actually uh, filled in for them a few times over the years. So like mm. there was like two summers where me and Adam would sort of like alternate. Like I'd do summer festivals, they'd have other stuff. Adam would fill in. Yeah. Same sort of thing would happen the year after, like in 2012 and 2013. So uh, mm. Mm. yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's been phenomenal, man. It really has. So we've got a few questions coming in of folks on the stream. Okay. Uh, so Jacob is here. What up, Jacob? And uh, he's saying, Josh, how did you progress with your guitar when you were learning? Did you mainly learn songs that you liked or did you start writing straight out of the gate? Um, Bit of both. I mean, in terms of like progressing, in terms of like getting better as a guitarist, technically, I always had... <laughs> No, I did that. Uh, I always had lessons. Scales. So, <laughs> yeah, scales. I always, yes, I did a lot of scales. So I had guitar lessons uh, a lot. Um, and yeah, I'd, I mean, the first songs I learned to play was like Stuff Off the Bends by Radiohead, the first Foo Fighters album, uh, the first two Oasis albums, just like acoustic stuff that you can just play simple chords. And uh, yeah, I, I did try and start writing my own music as well uh back then but i can't remember because i didn't have any way of recording it really right 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 right. yeah 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 i had an old tape machine for recording drums and god it sounded terrible (laughs) oh yeah yeah so i i used to i did used to record myself uh write stuff sorry as well but um in terms of like actually what got me good at guitar again doing that um yeah, I did have lessons. I do recommend getting some theory and that sort of thing. I yeah, I'd say so because I think now more than ever, you, if you're starting to play any instrument, you can just quickly go drum, guitar, bass, tutorial on YouTube or whatever. And there's just there's yeah. such a plethora of stuff out there. But as you say, so still important to actually get to grips with with the theory and I guess not go straight to learning Slayer, but work your way to it. Yeah, no, that, that's something that I I see a lot that i would like i i see people like trying to go straight to doing the most technical stuff like they rip off like not rip off sorry but i've seen people mm. like trying to cover some of the most technical solosis songs and i get tagged in it and they've only been playing like a, you know less than a year and i'm like i mean it's great but i feel like if you overlook the basics and like chords and just playing songs you sort of might sort of miss out on things technique wise mm. or playing wise that uh i don't know but yeah i mean do what you want there's no rules i don't know why i'm sounding like such a <laughs> well mate there, honestly but, yeah. you know you're you're certainly becoming that name that people reference amongst you know the big names of guitarists and actually this is an interesting question now from uh Sakenham saying what does it feel like to be called the next chuck schnaldner um cheers from argentina um I don't, I don't feel deserving of that, but it's very kind. I mm. mean, it's just, it's a huge compliment because like he's like one of the biggest influences uh, musically on me. So uh, yeah, it's flattering, but I wouldn't agree with it. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you anyway. And uh, if, if, if he's saying it, thank you. It, it is, yeah. So um, and Brad was uh, asking, uh, what what tuning do you write in uh, with with new silosis? uh d standard mostly uh i have maybe written something in e again and i experiment a little bit with drop c which we started off in so uh, Mm -hmm. back to the Mm -hmm. roots for that they can't have a go at me for that (laughs) (laughs) uh and passages saying will there be will there be a new passages album and is it possible to sell some posters in your merch shop i'm dying to get an edge of the earth poster for my room which is taking things back a little bit do you know what i found a box of edge of the earth posters somewhere i i don't feel like i could sell them because they're like or i mean i wouldn't personally sell them but they're like they're all folded they're, i think they're like shop promo things so it says yeah. like it's the album cover and then it says out now and then there's like a white bit underneath that i guess you would write something yeah. for i don't know what mm-hmm. what mm-hmm. you'd write but i for you know indie music stores maybe but um so I actually have a I have a load of them, but we don't have any for sale. Any. Uh, yeah, I'd feel bad. I mean, I, they're not like 
they're not they're worth mementos. any money. I mean, I love the artwork for Edge of the Earth, and I mean, I have so many great memories around that sort of time because obviously I had the pleasure of working with you and and yeah. the band, and I've got. Um, so for those of you who don't know, I used to work at Nuclear Blast Records. Um, it was around the time of Edge of the Earth. And I've got a memento. In fact, I think it's just here. Um, it's the Made of Ale pass from BBC from the session. Oh, that, cool. That, that we did. So it was that and XFM that we managed to blag back in the day. And I was like, yes, I got Silosis on XFM, a band that, you know, this heavy <laughs> on, a, on a station as, uh, as commercial as that. So um, yeah. I know what you mean when you come to those momentums. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, you know, certainly interested to 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 look at back at that time and i think that's just why i'm so pleased that you've been able to pick silosis back up because obviously you mentioned yeah you sort of but even before the architect's equation came into it you'd kind of almost fallen out of love with it because you're restraining yourself so it must feel it it must feel like actually you're probably in the best place ever with silosis that you've ever been with it yeah i i think so and like i i definitely don't want people to think that i mean they'll know now because the album's out but like it's not like uh, the latest album is like a huge departure that I was like, oh, I just need to like some time away for it from it and to like uh, just have a fresh perspective on writing and not get too caught up in my head about stuff. Because uh, funnily enough as well, I started sending, I started writing uh, music in 2016 uh, for like a new band, like a new project. Didn't it didn't have like members, but I was just like, I sent some demos to Nuclear Blast. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, to me, it was like really different music. And they're like, why are you trying to do a new band? This just sounds like Silosis. I was like, oh. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I I, uh, I just needed like a yeah, fresh perspective or just to view a lot of the writing as if it was a new project. Mm -hmm. And it still comes out sounding pretty similar because it's me writing it. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, the, the Josh Middleton solo record probably wouldn't be a thing then. <laughs> uh no <laughs> <laughs> and and with cycle of suffering i have to say there's some really standout tracks on on there but the one that i i really love in like if if i was back at blast uh now i'd be like apex of disdain like that's for me like as oh, soon yeah? as that kicks in i'm like holy fuck and i'm a huge testament fan so i can kind of hear some of that in there would that be, would that be fair to say some of that influence yeah in yeah sure yeah i yes yeah, it's, it's a i could I listen to Testament a lot, so that's completely fair to say. Then that, that probably rubs rubs off on me as well. Mm. Thing is, though, and like your average Sil Silosis fan would just see that song as like, you know, sounds quite a Silosis, very like traditionally metal. But to me, I was listening to like a lot of Stick to Your Guns when I wrote that song. Ah, interesting. Especially like if you listen to like the last, like the main riff when it goes to a groove, like people will be like, oh yeah, it sounds like Pantera. But in my head, I was thinking like Stick to Your Guns, <laughs> right? Which is like again like uh it it still comes out sounding like silosis and like heavy but that's another like thing that i was just like scared about doing anything that sounded like a hardcore band or whatever back in the day and now like people don't even notice when i do do it <laughs> mm, mm. so yeah. yeah yeah i mean yeah it's really cool that yeah you've been able to i guess embrace the things those self-restrictions that you put on yourself so things that would have held you back are now actually the things that are pushing you forward yeah, and like again, like I'm definitely not uh, trying to. T I mean, if, if I like any fans are watching this and they love Solosis and they love like the way the band sounds, I'm definitely not suggesting that we're going like way more hardcore or way more metalcore or anything like that. But like, it's yeah, it's more just like my approach to writing and not worrying if something sounds too metalcore because like we we're still going to be like you know a, a more like thrash traditional kind of metal band uh, and not necessarily hardcore metalcore but those are just tough music i listen to a lot so like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah so uh, what, what, what are you listening to at the moment what's uh what's what's on rotation uh, for you if i'm honest i i listen to so much music um for production these days like, i'm a bit of a production nerd this i'm this is like a home studio i'm in at the moment but yeah, um yeah. i genuinely just listen to anything andy sneep has mixed <laughs> or produced. he is just up there isn't he he's yeah done... i just honestly you look at like, the even records he's done over the years we talked yeah obviously end of heartache with kill switch and massive ones yeah. there but he's done I, yeah i think he's done all a couple the testament, of testament albums since... and testament yeah. in particular um, uh, for me the thing i absolutely adore about testament is i i love their old stuff but for me it's like formation upwards 
where they were able to drop albums like The Formation of Damnation and Dark Roots of Earth with the new production and the heavier vocals. I've yeah. never seen a band with a legacy as uh, and a history that Testament have put out new music that that just eclipsed what they did. Yeah, back in I, the I day. feel it's like so rare they... for bands like Testament to be able to achieve that. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I agree. Like, I mean. Don't know if I'd say eclipse necessarily, but uh, that's probably strong yeah, I, from me. I just love formation. Yeah. No, but I, I agree. Like I, I don't listen. I'll tell you what the album that got me into them, which was another Andy Sneap one, was um, First Strike Still Deadly. So Andy Sneap, the remastered, re- the, the re-recordings re-recorded of the old all their stuff. old stuff. Same, same. And I heard that, and I was just like, this is like Metallica, but the production, <laughs> like, like really modern production, and like the vocals are like heavy, and, like. The, yeah i was just like this is sick i love testament so from then on but yeah i I agree with you i i always listen to the new stuff and they're they're very consistent and yeah like they've they're heavier than ever or at least like Mm. since formation onwards that or actually well what's it um the gathering yeah they've just been like so heavy and like they're a band that started off like you know quite traditional thrash stuff and now he's like almost doing death metal vocals sometimes so yeah well yeah chuck does have a pretty death metal growl at times and obviously this yeah. would be in a post-covid context talking about shows and stuff would you do you think you could see yourselves on a on a bill with with testament and if you got the chance would, would you do it yeah we we actually been lucky enough to play with them a couple of times already we did i think a show like an off-date sort of festival european show in germany with them mm-hmm. or maybe it was mm-hmm. two and then we supported them around the time of formation actually it they oh, played right. uh, yeah, yeah they played tiny show it was the islington Academy, you know what, actually? I think I was there. Yeah, I was yeah. talking earlier about been... how, like, this year shot my memory. Um, it must have been but... 2008-ish. Yes. Yeah, because I think they did the New Order and the Legacy back to back. If I can't remember. No, I don't know if it was that, but because I think they'd already done the big comeback London show where, where they play, like, Coco, maybe? They did a DVD yeah. there, yeah. live in London. Yeah. So they'd done that already, but then, yeah, they did a much smaller one, and I think it was just us supporting. But uh, yeah, I'd love to, yeah, do some stuff with them again. Like proper tour, yeah. Because I think I think it works. I think there's probably a lot of Testament fans out there who are not necessarily aware of Silosis, but would just sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, to you guys immediately. I mean, they're obviously like a much you know older fan base generally, so uh, that's fair to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Now you did such an incredible live stream with Trivium about a month or so ago, and we talked um, on on the station about how live streams from the lockdown kind of started out with you know, acoustic in your living room and now they've just gone to this absolute gargantuan of production so what was it like to be involved with that because it was like twenty thousand tickets were bought for an online event was was that it i yeah i, I don't know what it was i think yeah, i heard something like that That's about crazy. that um yeah I, I, it's gonna have to be you know uh the, the way to go for a while until touring comes back um Behemoth just did an amazing. Run. Oh, didn't they? It was they? insane. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I th- yeah, I think you know you've got to, you know, bands are going to think more out, out of the box now because if, if you're going to put on a show and um, you can't have people there, then you might as well do a show where you can have people there anyway. Like they did it in that church and it was really cool. Mm, like with mm. all the, uh, you know, obviously all the fire and stuff. But um, yeah, no, it, it's it's uh bands just you know getting creative with it and yeah you know if if touring's off you know touring is how bands make money Mm, yeah especially in metal like it's just Mm. what we rely on really so uh touring and merch and most of the merch is sold when you're touring exactly (laughs) so uh yeah yeah Yeah. it's it's a necessity but um i think uh all bands that are doing it are you know, are really putting like a lot of attention and, and care into what they do and making sure that they, you know, do something that um is yeah, is is worth the, the ticket value of whatever ticket they're, you know, mm. however much they're selling it for, it's got to be something that's worth worth that. So I I think, you know, bands are, you know, really making an effort. Um so yeah, it, but it, it definitely like really helps support the bands. If, they, mm-hmm. if they're doing mm-hmm. a live stream yeah so i suspect we'll see more of them in 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 the future then yeah i i reckon there will be i i really don't i have no idea but it doesn't look like touring is going to be back for you know i don't know 
year I mean, yeah it's kind, of the, kind of the vibe isn't it yeah because uh, it, it felt like for a while like oh things are going all right yeah maybe we'll be touring and then like just as of recently like the last week or two with like the new restrictions coming in it's like oh mm, yeah. maybe not as and soon I, as and I, I feel thought. like as well because we've i've seen a few social distance gigs come up here and there you have the stuff in newcastle with like frank turner's done stuff up there and i feel like actually unfortunately metal is even more hamstrung by it because an acoustic show might work socially distanced for someone like Frank Turner. Yeah. But I just, like, because metal is what it is, and it's all about the energy, the mosh pits, and the vibe in the room, I, I, I'm not really sure about any social distance gig for metal. I know what you mean, yeah. I, I really, uh, I completely understand that. I, I don't know how I feel about it, but it, it really depends, like, how how long this lasts. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, I, it... I, I am open to changing my mode because when all of this oh, started, yeah, no, I was I... very much kind of like, no, it's 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 all or nothing, and I'm coming around to it. I think it's more now just on the particular point of metal because I'm, I'm trying to imagine myself watching you guys and not being able to rage. <laughs> I know what you mean, yeah. I, it's kind of, uh, yeah, I, I feel like, you know, if this, if this no touring and stuff goes on until, like, 2022 or something i think people would be like all right you know what yeah okay we're gonna have to do like drive-ins or like socially distant shows where just because yeah it'll be just too long <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. but um yeah who knows mm -hmm. but i i think the live streaming things like uh, really great it's cool to see that that's um doing so well yeah yeah i mean it's uh, twenty thousand tickets for an online event and that's all income for for the bands and everyone involved so more of that uh we, we talked about writing in silosis uh, jason's getting in touch and saying how far along is the new architects record if, if indeed is the new architects record even far along is, is even in, in existence as it were um we yeah i think we're just gonna take our time and you know that like it, it's it's like we're so spread out now as well mm. like we've got um guitarist in canada dan's moved down to totnes but There'll always be, you know, writing happening, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, wabs back and forth. And we talked earlier the about you know the the guitar lessons and things like that. And uh, just kind of another question on that, saying for someone who ultimately wants to play metal guitar, do you recommend taking lessons from a general teacher or from yeah. someone who specialises in metal? Yeah, I yeah i don't know how easy it'll be to f i mean it depends where you live as well but i don't know how easy it is to find a uh guitar teacher that is specifically into metal i it's rare that you find guitar teachers that really just focus on one thing Have but you i mean thought if you, about doing it yeah i mean well yeah good but <laughs> if, if you go to a guitar teacher and you just tell them what you like and you take music along and you'd be like oh can you teach me how to play this you know maybe they'll right okay yeah we're gonna do some scales and some theory but i'll also if you bring stuff along i'll teach i'll show you how to play it and I, that's what my guitar lessons were like and i'd imagine that a lot of guitar teachers would be the same at the end of the day you're paying them mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. unless you're going to like a a specific guitar school or academy and like the curriculum's all laid out for you if you're just paying someone for guitar lessons uh yeah you can probably just tell them what you want to learn yeah yeah all right. get them to tailor the lessons to it's you. funny we, we talked earlier about not going from you know straight to slayer but i was definitely yeah. that kid that wanted to go straight to slayer my drum teacher at school was like no no you're not even gonna get on the drum kit yet here's here's how you do quavers i'm like oh yeah <laughs> i feel like that's not helpful that's another it's another form of like repression where like you'll just be like no she came me on a kit and just start blasting straight away yeah yeah I, I it was exactly what i did like and uh i had a great drum teacher his name was pekka he was a polish war veteran who had a finger missing so he had to learn okay. drums in a totally different way uh but he was very good at being strict so yeah i, I think that stuff definitely helps uh and uh, pedro from brazil is here what up and saying do you like to use guitar plugins uh or do you prefer to use uh sort of real uh plugins like on your board uh at, uh, at gigs Oh, at gigs, mm. I use a Kemper. Oh, okay, um, right. So I make all my own profiles in here. I have a bunch of different cabs and heads, so I, I do that. Um, and recording, yeah, I use uh, some plugins at home when I'm demoing and stuff now. Uh, the STL Tone Hub is one of them I use a lot. So, uh, yeah. Nice. I'm just in the process, I was talking earlier on the stream about... I haven't played drums in about 
four or five years and I want to get in the, an electric drum kit again. When I last played an electric drum kit many, many moons ago, they weren't that good and the triggers were, were, were you know, you'd hit it once and it'd just fire off like a million beats. But it seems amazing to me now, just researching back into it, like how much the technology side of not just drums, but all the guitar tech stuff has oh, changed. Yeah. Like it's, there's so much available now, isn't there, to improve your sound? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Loads. Yeah. Especially, I I definitely say like in the last five years as well, in particular, like especially like um, plugins and that sort of thing. Mm, mm. For sure. Yeah. Uh, and I saw you recently joined Twitch. How's that going? Um, I am bad at remembering that I have a Twitch account. <laughs> uh, I started off doing it. I was like, um, I did a charity one to begin with. Just yeah, I thought it was a you know a good way to start it. And um, I yeah, I kind of I, I I had the intention like well you know Solos is um we had some shows booked and we're going to do some touring maybe this year, but can't do that now. So I guess I'll do some like Twitch stuff, you know, interact yeah. with fans that had maybe been missing some Solos stuff and just do some playthroughs and some mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just share some guitar knowledge. But I my my wife was like. Do you like? Do you ever go on there? I'm like, oh yeah, I should do that. I'll do it tonight. So I, I'm I'm not as consistent as I'd like to. Be. <laughs> but, um, no, it's cool. It's nice to like, you know, now that there aren't shows happening, it's nice to you know connect with fans and stuff and just play some guitar and yeah. Know, well, just from the amount of comments we've had on this stream here, I'm I'm sure you'll you'd be so many who want to oh, watch yeah. it like do you, i'm on twitch there's a, lot, there's a lot of you know particularly with the musicianship and the guitar playing and everything like that so uh what is your twitch handle if people want to follow follow you on twitch i don't even know i think it's just josh middleton <laughs> just josh middleton <laughs> i think so yeah I, I i think it is just josh middleton but um yeah you'll find me if, if yeah i'm sure you'll see a picture Pop of up me on if, a if that's right nice but, nice yeah no it's um i'm, I'm sort of like I, I like being somewhat of a recluse and like uh, I just live in the countryside and I don't go out and see people, but I, and like, I, I'm quite a bit of a hermit, but I do like going out on tour and knowing that I do have some sort of connection to the outside world, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but, um, but not touring. I'm like, Oh yeah, I just kind of like stuck here. So like, you know, just going on Twitch now and then it's kind of cool. It's that difficult thing. Like, Cause I've, people. I've met so many in the music world, so many folks who are, way more introverted than people think they are and i think that actually can be difficult in the music world because everyone thinks like whoa you're in a band you're like you're constantly out there we're actually so many bands are actually quite more reserved that, yeah that's been my i had it like it. me and me and a few friends in other bands that were all kind of similar like very introverted and very quiet and people just take that as if you're like in a band like take that as arrogance mm. like you don't want to talk to people or anything or like yeah you're... yeah too good for anything but like it's just like you're either like quiet shy or whatever it is but i'm i, I mean i think it's quite common i guess because if you, traditionally more introverted people are probably quite creative as well maybe the two go hand in hand and like mm -hmm. if you like spending a lot of time on your own it's probably because you're doing something like playing guitar or being creative or whatever mm -hmm. it might be so um yeah it's probably quite common that you meet people that are like introverted or like hermits and stuff uh, and then they have to go out on stage and like you know be a front man or whatever but yeah, yes normally yes I'm, I'm pretty, i've always kind of classed quiet. myself as a bit of a introverted extrovert so like my my base is kind of like introvert but in certain situations i'll be like right i'll go come out of my shell and they'll be like and i'm going back in again <laughs> yeah, yeah recharge a bit. recharge yes that's certainly yeah. that's certainly my own personality um dude this has been so awesome to catch up and yeah uh thanks for hanging out after just putting your daughter to sleep and uh and i'm glad we didn't wake her up while she's been sleeping yeah well actually the baby monitor is not working so i need oh, to go right, check, so you need to go check. right 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 well yeah fuck off because <laughs> you got important things to do rather than chatting shit with me um so dude yeah seriously thank you so much and um, no worries, man. yeah i uh, hope you're able to get catch some stuff up. planned in and another stream soon is is, is there anything planned in Oh, for, on Twitch, do you mean? Uh, just Silosis. Oh, and, is oh Silosis, anything, sorry. Anything oh, you can oh say? a stream for Silosis. Sorry, I, I was talking over you, so I didn't hear That's what you said. That's all good. That's all um, good. Nothing planned as of yet, but um, yeah, it, um, you know, the way things are going, yeah, probably probably do something. Something soon. Cool, <laughs> cool. Dude, it's cool. been great to catch you up. Go look after you. Yeah, you way. too. <laughs> cool. Bye, nice one, Pete. All bye the bye. best. Bye-bye. See you, man. See you, mate. Bye-bye.